In Exodus chapter 3, Moses asks God, If I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how I am to be remembered in every generation. In Daniel chapter 7, suddenly <clears throat> one like a son of man was coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was escorted before him. <clears throat> he was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, so that those of every people, nation and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. <clears throat> In John chapter 8, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. In Revelation 22, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Late in time, behold him come. You may say, what is Charles Wesley, who wrote this carol, talking about? Jesus came about 2,000 years ago. What does he mean, late in time? What we forget is that the whole of history, indeed the history of this planet, has been building up to the moment when Jesus Christ was to appear. <clears throat> Thousands of years ago, Adam walked with God in the Garden of Eden. Then he and Eve disobeyed God, and on that occasion God spoke to the serpent, and he said that a descendant of Adam would strike his head. God foretold that Jesus was to come. Thousands of years later, in about 2000 BC, God spoke to a farmer in what is now Iraq, called Abraham, and sent him to what is now Israel. He said to him, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Why? Because Abraham was to have a descendant and he was the one who was going to save the nations. Jesus was to go. A couple of hundred years later, God gave to Moses his set of rules and principles, the law, and he told Moses he would send a prophet. Jesus was to come. Constantly, history was looking forward to the coming of Jesus. David wrote many psalms, and if you read some of those psalms, you will see that they do not just talk about David but they talk about a king who was to come and one who was to rise from the dead. Jesus was to come. Solomon was a king who reigned over Israel in a time of peace, but Solomon himself was a foreigner of the prince of peace, Jesus, who was to come. About 600 BC, God spoke to Isaiah, and very clearly told him a great deal about the one who was to come. A great light was to appear to those living in darkness. He was to be the wonderful counsellor, mighty God, eternal father, prince of peace. Jesus was to come. Later, we find that Isaiah talked about what would happen to Jesus, about his death and his suffering for us. Then a hundred years or so later, God spoke to Daniel and gave him a vision of God the Father, the Ancient of Days, and one is presented to him who is called Son of Man. Jesus was to come. 
Again and again, the scriptures talk about Jesus. The last of the prophets of the Old Testament, Malachi, told the people about the son of righteousness. Jesus was to come. Late in time, behold him come. Jesus came. The whole of history pivots around that event. Of course, the scriptures say very little about the birth of Jesus. A couple of gospels mention it. Paul mentions it on one occasion. No, we don't worship a baby. We worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who is, of course, coming a second time. The whole of history revolves around Jesus. We will never really understand the greatness of God's plan unless we recognise this. We're waiting for him to come again and we have a job to do before he does that. Late in time, behold him come. He has come. And we don't subscribe to a set of principles. We don't follow a particular set of rules. We don't belong to a particular religion. We follow Jesus. He is the one who Charles Wesley got so excited about in this wonderful carol. Late in time, behold him come. Let's give him our devotion. Let's serve him. Let's obey him. Thank you, Father, that I heard about Jesus many years ago. Thank you that we live in a country where we are free to speak and respond to the message of Jesus and follow him. I pray that we won't be complacent about this privilege. This is, and remember those who live in societies where it is much more difficult. Amen. Amen.